Hello. To celebrate the fact that Cinema 4D S22 finally has some pretty decent UVing tools, I thought I'd share with you today a simple little widget that I've made to help with my workflow in UVing and also mesh checking. It's obviously completely free and you can download it from a link in the description to this video. So to understand what it does and how to use it, let's dive into Cinema 4D. Take a look. Right, if you open the project file that uh, came in the link in the description for this video and you open it in Cinema 4D, you'll get something like this. We have a rather unassuming null object here. Uh, we also have a material. Now this has an external image file link to it that's embedded in here. So in order to get uh, this to work consistently, I would add this to your content browser. Uh, and that's done by clicking this tab here in the default layout. I'm just gonna undock this so we can see that and our objects here, you can just simply drag and drop it into a preset folder. And what that does is it uh, moves everything, including any external image files, into your content browser, which by default is in your system preferences. And that means in future, if you ever want to use this little checker again, all you do is double click it in your content browser and it will apply the null to whichever scene you're in and it will uh, keep the a reference to your image file here without any sort of errors or asking you if you want to make them absolute paths or some nonsense like that. So using content browsers is a really good way of accumulating little tools and making them more easily usable on a day-to-day -day basis. So that out of the way, here we have this uh, this null object here, which has got some espresso in, and it's got this uh, user data tab, which is where the magic happens. So there are two instances where we might want to use this tool. And I'm going to show you the first one here uh, in a little scene file that I've created, uh, which is something that I get a lot, which is sent, I get sent, sent CAD data. And that CAD data is often quite messy. You have hundreds of layers, even in something fairly simple like this. Uh, and what you want to do is to want to be able to check which geometry is in which object layer, because occasionally things are either combined into layers uh, that you don't want them to be combined together in, or they're separated when you want them to be combined. So mesh checking by color is a very useful little tool. So if I go across to my content browser and I double click my color checker, that's gonna add my color checker null to my scene here and we get this little interface. So the way that you uh, mesh check this simply is as simple as dragging and dropping all of these objects into this object list window. But what you'll find is if you try to select an object or if you uh, say middle mouse click, which will select everything underneath this null, uh, it changes the attribute editor. So the first thing that you need to learn to do is to lock your attribute editor. So I've selected my color checker. I'm gonna lock it now so this isn't gonna disappear. I can middle mouse click my suspension strut null here, and then just drag that into this window, which adds all of the objects. And as if by magic, we get uh, a nicely colored mesh, which we can very quickly see has a lot of things in the same layer. Now we have a random seed here, so you can actually flick the colors around just to be sure that things that are the same color are in the same layer. So this is just randomized. And what we notice straight away in this example is we have a spring here and this base uh, struts here all in the same layer and it's quite likely we wouldn't want that because we may want to animate this spring deforming we may want to keep this the same so now I can just click this and we see this is the offending uh, mesh here and so I can use the various tools to separate these objects out so um, we may also want to do the opposite for instance we can see that these are also part of this layer but this is not and we want, might want things like this to be combined so you can very quickly see where your issues lie when checking complicated CAD data that you've been sent. Okay, so that's the first very simple method. What you might say when you finish doing this is, oh, but you've just colored all of my layers here. What, um, what, how do I get this to go back to my original? Because there's not an easy way of doing it by hand. What we've actually done here, I'm just going to unlock my attribute editor here. If we look at one of these layers, what this code has done, the Expresso has changed the layer color for all of our objects here. Um, so you would have to by hand go back and change those to neutral if you didn't want this 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 poppy show of a display here in future. Uh, but that is handleable with the, the little checker controls here. All you need to do um, to get this back to where you started is, is change the mode from random, which is its default state, to constant, which is what it is if you haven't applied your color checker. That's gonna apply this color. You could change that if you wanted to, to something else. Um, but by default in Cinema 4D, 
your layer colors are white. Uh, and now that's returned it back to how you wanted it. You could just switch the layer colors off um, if you didn't want that to be uh, on, which it's not by default with an object that you first bring into Cinema 4D. And so here we've managed to return our CAD data back to its original look when we first imported it into Cinema 4D. So just to go through that quickly again, we can get random colors in random mode, then we can put them all back to white or any other solid color using the constant mode, and then we can just switch them all off to display. So what that does is it just dis switches the display color off. OK, so let's move on to the second use for this color checker tool. Here we have another a rather simple scene with a bed model in. Now, this bed is uh, part of the default Cinema 4D content, so you can access that by the, by the content browser as well if you want. Um, but if I expand this and have a look, you can see again, this is a rather complicated model that someone might have given you. And it's good for uh, looking at another type of checking that we often need to do, which is UV checking. So we need to check the UV coordinates of models if we're going to start adding texture maps from external uh, third party programs or if we're going to add procedural textures here which have a pattern to them. We want to check that they make sense, so they're the right way round, they're proportional, etc. Now with an object this complicated, that's quite a tedious process to do longhand, but with our mesh checker we can make it a lot easier. So again, as before, we go to our content browser and we double click the colour checker to add it to our scene. And the process begins very similarly to before. I'm going to lock my attribute editor with the padlock here, and I'm going to add all of the objects under this null by middle mouse clicking and dragging them into my object list window. And similarly to before, everything's going to change colour. But something that's a bit suspicious to me here is that almost all of the stuff in the middle is this same purple colour. Uh, so that would suggest that everything is in the same mesh. Uh, but that's actually not the case. There's a bit of a gotcha here. Um, we have all of these fabric objects under a subdivision surface object. If I just unlock my attribute editor and click that. Under the basic tab, we can see this has this purple color. But what happens is it hijacks anything underneath, so it becomes kind of wrapped up almost as a connect object into a single item, um, and everything underneath will have this purple color. So the way around that is just to temporarily disable your subdivision surfaces. And when we do that, you can see that everything changes color and has individual colors. And that's because they're now reverting to their specific individual display colors. So it's something to look out for if you're going to do this process. That being said, how do we actually UV check as opposed to mesh check this? Well, we start off doing it by changing this color mode from random to texture. And what happens with texture mode is it starts to use um, OpenGL to try to display image maps that are embedded in the specific materials. But as you can see in this example, nothing really much has happened. We've actually reverted back to our original bed model. So the process here is what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a special little take that's going to allow us to make some changes to this scene that don't affect our base model, which we would want to see in our renders, but do allow us to quickly do some UV checking. So I'm going to make a take by going to my takes tab here. This may be somewhere else in your interface. Takes are incredibly powerful. If you don't use them, you should. Uh, I'm going to make this take and I'm just going to name it uh, UV just for the sake of helping us here. And I'm going to make sure that it's recording all of our keystrokes. Now, the process here is I'm going to replace temporarily because we're in a take all of the materials that are on this bed with our special MMUV color checker material. And that process is made very easy for us in Cinema 4D um, with some uh, options here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the first material. I'm going to hold down shift so that we select all of the materials on this bed. I'm then going to go to the select menu and I'm going to say select material tags objects. And what that does is it actually selects in the object list all of the material tags on all of these objects that have these materials. And that's everything. So with this attribute available, this is where the material that goes onto that tag is actually applied. So now I can just click and drag my MMUV checker onto here and it's replaced everything. And instantly we've got something a lot more interesting. Now we've got our randomized colors back and we've got this embedded uh, image map, which is useful for UV checking. And you can see here, for instance, that our numbers appear sort of back to front, upside down. 
Uh, so that means that the UVs on this pillow are kind of flipped around. So we may want to go into the UV editor and switch that around. Everything else looks fairly okay, but you're very quickly going to spot things like stretching and squashing. Uh, and that's exactly what UV checking is for. And the reason obviously that we did that in a take is that if we go back to our original main take, we've got all of our original materials back because if we go back to our object list and look at all of the tags, these have all been edited in our take, in our UV take. So if we come back in this take, these have now got the MMUV checker and that would be a bit of a nightmare to, to resurrect our original assignments of all of our materials by hand. So the take allows us to do that, to record those temporary changes. And when we finished, we can simply delete and come back. And as before, we've got all of these objects we've sort of tinkered slightly with their display modes. Uh, we, we've changed the display color to automatic, which is the UVs for uh, embedded textures. So I might want to go back to constant, switch them off and return our model exactly back to as it was when we started. OK, so that's basically the uh, full functionality of this little checker. It's a small thing, but um, it's certainly something that I use many, many times on jobs. And so I thought I would share it with you today. So that just about wraps it up. A nice short and sweet tutorial from me. If you've enjoyed it, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Or come over to Twitter and say hello or follow me at Meshmash UK. So take care and don't forget, there's no such thing as being lucky. So you'd better be good.